Okay, so happy Sunday fun day. Hope you had a great weekend. Here's a perfect way to top it off. I hope you're sitting down because you're going to want to watch this one. This is the first of many of a collaboration with Brent McMahon. If you're not sure who Brent McMahon is, he's a two-time Olympic Canadian triathlete and, I hope I get this correctly, four-time Ironman champion. Yes, four-time Ironman champion. Uh, awesome guy. Been working with him a lot lately. There's a lot of videos to come, so let me know what you thought of this video. Today, he's going to teach me about hill climbing. If you like this video, comment down below. If you want to see more, comment down below. Hit the thumbs up, and don't forget to, to subscribe. The little red button, hit it. So... Happy Sunday fun day. Hope you enjoyed the video. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bob Rice, Brody Boucher. Please check to see that if you don't want to kill his husband. All right, so I'm sitting here with Brent McMahon, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Tell me about yourself. Yeah, well, um, I've been racing triathlon since I was 10 years old, and uh, so that's been almost 30 years now that I've been racing triathlons, and it's been a lifestyle, it's been a job, but it's been a lot of fun mostly and I've done all sorts of racing. I've done, you know, two Olympics, I've done Xterra off-road triathlon and now currently I'm racing Ironmans. So, uh, wow. a little bit of everything. Wow, crazy. You've got quite the career. Like, uh, how far back does it go? Um, well, I was, uh, went to my first World Championships when I was 15 years old in Cancun, Mexico, and so that was my first taste of high-performance triathlon. And from there, then I was on the national team and uh, Athens and London Olympics, and then, uh, yeah, Ironman racing, so it's wow. just been an evolution. So for coming from a relatively beginner cyclist, definitely compared to you, what kind of tips can I look for for becoming like a beginner cyclist, I can tell that you've got a lot of bikes. Yeah, well that's, you know, you know, going from a beginner to an experienced uh, cyclist, there's an evolution there. And I started as a beginning cyclist, you know, everybody does, I, everybody does you know, you, you take the training wheels off the, the kid's bike and you learn how to, you know, let her go. So, um, you know, one of the most important things is, is finding the right bike for what you're doing. And as you can see, I got, I got lots of bikes. I do lots of different riding. So, um, you know, I've got one for road riding, I've got one for gravel riding, I've got one for time trialing, I've got a mountain bike, you know, so I've, I've got one for everything. Yeah. Um, but you know, that's the benefit of being sponsored. Um, but it's, uh, you know, when you're getting into cycling, it's important to go to a shop that knows what they're doing and knows how to give you the bike that you need for what you're doing. And um, secondly to that is making sure the bike fits. Um, you're going to enjoy cycling a lot more as a beginner if you have the right bike and it fits you properly because you don't want to be uncomfortable and you know a lot of time you can get numb hands or you know your bum gets sore uh -huh. so fitting on a bike that's that's key to enjoyment and that's how you should really start today we're going to ride the observatory uh, what kind of tips can I look for for like climbing yeah climbing is one of those things that um, you know there's different ways to do it. Um, you know, you can go really hard at it. You can waste a lot of energy, um, or you can be efficient at it. Yeah. And you know, depending on how long you're riding, um, you probably want to ride hills efficiently as opposed to you know going as hard as you can. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're doing a workout, well then yeah, go at it and you know go as hard you as you save can. Save your energy before you kill yourself in the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. But um, you know, the main thing with climbing is um, finding a comfortable climbing position. Um, how you ride on the flat is different than how you ride climbing. So some people like to, you know, be more upright. Some people actually like to get lower as they're climbing. Some people like to have their hands, you know, in the middle. In the middle. So finding what works for you and also finding a good cadence for climbing. Yep. You know, knowing how long the climb is, that sort of dictates your cadence. If it's a long climb, then you want to find a nice easy, easy cadence that can keep going for the whole climb. You don't want to start out like really hard and mashing the gears yeah. and then get a quarter of the way up and then be blown up and hell have to take it easy the rest of the way. So 
Cadence plays a big role in how well and how consistently you can ride a climb. I've been noticing on the Tour de France, because I've been doing a lot of homework, uh, they've been, some some of the uh, hill climbers have been climbing like this. Yeah. Climbing like this. What's your style? Um, for me, I, I'm, uh, I'm a bit more of a, a low rider when I climb. I, I like to get my chest down. Uh, for me, that allows me to lock in my core, and that's really in cycling where your power comes from. It's, yeah, it comes from your legs, but your legs are attached and anchored at your core. So for me, if I bring my chest down, it makes me really strong through the core, and I can really drive those pedals. So I like to keep my hands a little bit wider so I can bring my chest down. Whereas if I had my hands here, it'd force me to go back. You know, if I'm doing an easy climb, then yeah, I'll sit up there. A lot of time you see the sprinters when yeah. they're doing the climb, they're not concerned about how fast they're gonna go uphill. Yeah. They just wanna get up. So they're just, they're just kind of cruising and they're, they're in a nice light gear just spinning up the climb. Whereas those lead guys, you know, you see all they're sorts of, they're, they're you're weaving side to side because they're just giving her. Yeah, cool. Well, uh, thanks so much for this. No problem. Anything with an on and off switch, you can see power off, and then it closes our little phone. Thank you.